Hi, I'm Gene Norman. I'm standing along Buffalo Bayou, one of the 10 waterways that flows through Houston, Texas. That's one of the reasons why the fourth largest city in the U.S. has the nickname Bayou City. When it rains here, it can rain hard, causing those same bayous to swell, spill out of their banks, and flood nearby streets and neighborhoods. It's a threat we face year-round because of where we are. For one thing, we're only 35 feet above sea level, and right beneath the topsoil is a hard layer called gumbo. So rapidly falling rain doesn't run off, it rises. We're only 50 miles away from the Gulf of Mexico, so approaching tropical storms and hurricanes are poised to not only drench us with rain, but push storm surge water far inland. For the next half hour, we'll explore new research about the flood threat and examine successful strategies to lessen the impact of rising water. Houston was built in the semi-tropics, which gave us mild winters, but a lot of rain sometimes. And as the city built up, then we covered more of the grasslands and the, and the prairies with concrete and asphalt. And we used water below the surface. So the well water depleted some of the aquifers and the city sank. That is why Houston has flooded worse in the last 30 years than we've seen in many, many years. But we've learned to do something about it. Maybe we didn't plan well at the outset, but Houstonians are moving to move the water into the bios and to appreciate the bios as an important part of reducing flooding in our city. We've also learned where to build and how to build. Flooding is a local event, but flooding occurs everywhere. When the rain falls on the natural environment, it falls gently on the trees, the grass, and the vegetation and soaks slowly into the ground. When we cover the ground with paving, we increase the runoff and increase the flooding. How we handle our paving means how we handle our flooding. 40 inches of rain is not unusual from Maine to Missouri to Texas to Florida in the average year. From Kentucky southward, though, you could see more than 50 inches of rain. And right along the northern Gulf Coast, more than 60 inches of rain, all due to the fact that the Gulf of Mexico is a huge source of water. Now, in the summertime, we get a cooling sea breeze. Makes it feel pretty good at the beaches. But you also get scattered thunderstorms that are very slow moving, and they could be very heavy, dropping several inches of rain in just a short period of time. In the summer and fall, the other big rainmaker is tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes. And when they make landfall or get near the coastline, they can drop rainfall by the foot. We're here on the east end of Dolphin Island, Alabama, at the mouth of Mobile Bay. Uh, an area that's been impacted many, many times by a variety of hurricanes and a variety of problems. NOAA and the Dolphin Island Sea Lab have maintained monitoring stations for over 40 years here on the east end of the island and in the bay. Dolphin Island Sea Lab recorded Katrina's surge as it went over a station in the middle of Mobile Bay uh, it, during right in the middle of the storm. The um, ocean is the great energy distributor in the, in the world. You know, 76% of the world is covered by the ocean. And the, most of the heat energy is distributed by the movement of currents in the ocean. We are seeing really enormous interactions between the world's ocean and the atmosphere. And that then determines a lot of our weather patterns globally and ultimately on a more uh, local level. One of the things that we know at this point, though, is that the world's ocean is absorbing an enormous amount of heat energy. It's, it is warming more rapidly than the atmosphere, for example. And that means that it's going to take a long time to get rid of any of that heat energy that's in the ocean. But meanwhile, if you had a bowl of water, the volume is increasing because we're warming it up. And, and, and the problem is for people that live along the edge of the bowl, the water's getting higher. The two issues that we have to deal with are going to be fairly important to us. The first one that was demonstrated in New Orleans uh, in Hurricane Katrina was this issue of storm surge. But the fact of the matter is the water level is getting higher and the potential for tropical storm activity is worsened as a result of that volume increase. Now the second thing that has uh, real issues for us is the depth of the water at the edge of the bowl is has a tremendous impact on the wave height and the wave energy. And we have established in the wake of Katrina that a two-foot wave can actually break a wood frame wall. It breaks the wood at that point. 
So an increase in water depth has the very large potential of increasing the damage that we see along the shorelines, and this again is a consequence of deeper water. 